Aerodynamics, we all know it matters. Slippery equals fast. But downhill is a bit more complicated than that. How much difference does it really make? Before we get into that wind tunnel, let's have a brief look at the complicated relationship between downhill and aerodynamics. So back in the noughties, once a year, every top racer poured themselves into a Lycra skin suit for the World Championships while wearing baggy motocross style kit for other races and the World Cups. The use of these super fast skin suits gradually became more divisive with several more vocal riders expressing their displeasure publicly. So back in 2008, while a 21-year-old Rachel Atherton probably didn't mean for us to be still talking about it 15 years later, writing skin suits suck on your forearms after being beaten by Tracy Mosley in Canberra gives us a good insight into the divided feeling at the time. In contrast, some teams did embrace the opportunity to get all slippery and fast, so the Mojo Orange team run by Chris Porter during that 2008 season dons these all-black, latex, wet-look skin suits for the regular World Cup season, and this seemed to cause enough stink for the UCI to get involved. Well, it was only raced a couple of times, to be fair. Every single time we raced was a battle with the lads because they didn't want to wear it. <laughs> and. Um, and it was only raced a couple of times, but obviously the, the big thing was Fort William. It's a really big course, really mm -hmm. fast, really open. Mm -hmm. And any kind of aerodynamic help you can get on that track will make a big difference, and it did. And Ben, who was, you know, with the best will in the world, Ben was a sort of top 20, top 25 guy. Um, came in eighth. However, they did look more akin to drag racing outfits or downhill skiing rather than the kind of moto cool inspired kit that was defining a mountain bike identity at the time and it was feared to be bringing the image of mountain biking into disrepute. So the UCI got involved, tight skin suits were banned and we were back to square one with aerodynamics. So what happened next was over the following 15 years, mountain bike racing kit, particularly downhill, became more technologically advanced, more suited to the demands we were putting on it, and yes, tighter. And that takes us to December 2022, when the UCI released some interesting rule changes around clothing for the 2023 season. No longer is all Lycra elastine-based tight clothing banned, but Amendment 4.3.011 tells us that clothing must be of a two-piece type, it must be tight around the waist, and it must be designed and sold specifically for BMX or mountain bike downhill gravity racing, which is pretty ambiguous in my eyes. So for us at GMBN, we want to actually find out how close has this modern downhill kit got to a, a proper aerodynamic skin suit setup. So we're going to have to head somewhere to get some hard scientific data now. Let's see you in the wind tunnel. We've come to the home of British F1 Silverstone in Northamptonshire. The Formula One track is just over the road. So we're here at Silverstone Sports Engineering Hub to use their wind tunnel this morning in collaboration with AeroCoach. And we're going to find out how much time and speed we actually could be saving with a really aerodynamic outfit. We're going to be testing three outfits at Silverstone today. I've got the sort of baggy clothing that most of us realistically, that's what we're riding in on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got a really tight kit, kind of what people are actually racing World Cup downhill in these days. And we've also gone all out. We've got a modern cycling skid suit. We've got an aero helmet. I've got overshoes and we're going to get as aero as we possibly can. First test done, the normal clothing, it's pretty baggy and shaky in there once we reach that 50k an hour wind speed and um, 
you definitely feel just behind you how hard it's flapping, how much it's sucking you back. So it's time to take it up a notch, take it in a notch, get that tighter downhill kit on and see how many watts we're saving. So now I'm in the like modern day downhill race kit, or we've tried to approximate. Like this key thing is the tucks in waist, which you see everyone racing in now. That's actually part of the UCI rules. And um, it's, it's pretty slim fitting, but is it going to be faster? We're going to find out. the real differences with that outfit. It feels much sleek on my aero, but why we're here is obviously to get the science to tell us exactly how much faster that was, because it feels fast, but now we've got to take it right up to the most aero kit that I've got. So I'm going to chuck that on and see how fast we can get going. This is the outfit I've certainly been waiting for. Maybe not the one that you guys wanted to see on the channel, but it is hopefully going to be really fast. It's a proper time trialing suit from a local company to us in Bristol. I've got special overshoes as well. And the actual, the texture of these triangle pattern on the shorts was actually something developed here at Silverstone in conjunction with the manufacturers. So hopefully it's going to work out super quick. Now we've done the testing, I'm here with Xavier, the owner of AeroCoach, to take us through a few of the numbers because I think there's some pretty drastic results from that. I mean, first of all, we started off with a baggy, flappy t-shirt, moved down to the kind of downhill kit you see people racing in, and over our course, which was about a 3K course, we modelled it at right of speeds, but what's, how much faster is it going to make me? In terms of a speed increase, you about a kilometre an hour faster. So yeah. over three kilometers, we're looking at around kind of a four and a half minute event. Um, and that would save you around 6.5 seconds over, over three kilometers. Which is a big old winning margin. Yeah, yeah. That, that could be the difference between qualifying and not qualifying almost in a World Cup now, or making the semi-finals or not making the semi-finals. That is huge. Absolutely. So it dropped your aerodynamic drag by around about 5% in total. So for okay. the whole system, bike and rider yeah. was about 5% yeah. less. Wow. That's it is a lot. When, yeah, it's yeah. a big amount. Um, what about with the, the, psych, the aero suit on? Sure, so I think it's obviously worth bearing in mind that you're not allowed to wear an aero skin mm -hmm. suit for, for downhill. You have to have a two-piece suit. Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting seeing how much difference it would make if you were allowed yeah. to do it. And probably one of the reasons why the UCI have outlawed it now in the regulations. Yeah. So if you uh, were to wear the aero suit compared with the, the baggy um, t-shirt that you started with, mm -hmm you would save around 18 and a half seconds over that okay. same four, uh, three kilometer distance, over four and a half minutes or so, and your speed would increase by nearly three kilometers an hour, about 2.8 kilometers an hour. That's how much uh, of a difference yeah. it makes if you're traveling at around 40k an hour average over a, over a downhill yeah. event. Um, and it, to the gym. it's amazing how much, because if, obviously if you think that's not going to be a difference that we can actually make over all of the riding, because there's no. so many other factors, but it, it just shows what difference it will make in all the tiny little places that will add up accumulatively to be quite a lot of seconds. Just on every, every point there's obviously drag and you have to marry that with your braking and pedaling and everything else, but it's just gonna bring you up over the whole run. Exactly. Which is super interesting. So it'll obviously be different if you have a section that's at, you know, let's say 80 kilometers an hour, but not very long, which brings your average speed up. Yeah. So we're just modeling something that is a, you know, effectively an average of 40k an hour slowly downhill the whole yeah. time of what we'd see. So and you're probably not going to see this in the real world, but the differences are still pretty massive. And these, this figure, this was taken as an average between the two positions, exactly. right? With yeah. my, my aero tuck and the just general riding position, because we're trying to kind of account for the balance between what you'd be in in a downhill run. Now, the one I want to know about, because obviously this is something that we wouldn't really, you can't really do, and it's not practicable to wear this helmet, but we've got the time trial helmet. I'm expecting this to be quite a lot because it's so, you're not tucked over in aero position, it is poked up in the air. What was the aero helmet compared to the rest? So if we take the aero helmet 
and we compare it to just the, the normal full face helmet, um, you're reducing your overall drag of the whole bike and rider by about 6%. Now remember, that was similar to what we saw between the, um, the t-shirt and then the full race kit. Yeah. That was about 5%. Yeah. So just changing your helmet saves nearly as much as the entire kit that you were wearing yeah. um, from those two runs. And that was obviously the fastest setup we found overall. So yeah. with the skin suit on and the overshoes and the helmet, um, your total drag dropped by about 19%. <laughs> Which is crazy, and that you're saving crazy. about 27 seconds over that, okay. over that three kilometer, oh, four and a half minute yeah, uh, model strong. difference. As I said at the top of the video, downhill is a complicated sport, and that wind tunnel testing can only tell us so much. Consider the ebb and flow of a race run, where the differences are made. Simply slipping through the air faster might not get you that win. The braking points would shift backwards up the track. Every corner has a maximum speed and clearly airspeed isn't the only factor, but it does make a difference. Let's take it outside into the real world and see how this stacks up. So it's time for the first run. I've got my baggy clothing and we're aiming with this just to control as many variables as possible outside the clothing. So I'm just going to be taking it chill, no pedaling on this. Just roll down, try and hit every braking point the same and stuff like that and just see the speed that I get from the clothing. So it's time to crack on. That's a good bit of mountain biking. <laughs> Hopefully that's gonna match up super well with the wind tunnel testing because our simulated course, we had about a three kilometer run and we were aiming to take between four and four and a half minutes depending on the kit. That's about two and a half kilometers and I think going off the Garmin, it's taken me about 425 in the slowest kit. So we can actually get a really good comparison between you know, the ideal situation in a wind tunnel and then once we're actually mountain biking. But it was good. I was desperately trying to carry speed on the straights without pedaling, just not tucking because I want this to be in the wind, but you can feel it dragging you back a little bit. So hopefully you get a little bit more speed next time. Now I'm in my sort of modern day racing mountain bike kit. It's pretty similar to what I normally ride. I feel pretty normal in it. I've got the tucks in waist. No one's giving me any weird looks yet. Um, so I'm gonna get down the track, see if I go any faster. Just I'm running the, the more aero kit and it does feel a lot faster. I mean, I'm trying to ride consistently in terms of like, I do know this run really well. So it's, you kind of control for that and it's just the kit. And just going along all the straights, you feel zippy. And I was carrying so much on speed. There was a couple of jumps that I did that I couldn't do previously. And you just, just have a little boost, which is, I'm, I'm surprised that it was so much better. So I can't wait to put the skin suit on and see just the wild gains we're gonna get from that. The moment of truth is here, and that's about as much uphill pedaling as I'm going to be able to do in this outfit. It's natural habitat. But we are at a downhill venue, and that is the point of the video, so 
hopefully it's fast. <laughs> Luckily, it's still pretty quiet at the moment, so hopefully I can get down the track before anyone sees me dressed like this. <laughs> What's going on here, bud? You don't look very well dressed today for a winter's day. No, <laughs> went out of it. You trying to go fast or something? That's the plan. Oh, nice. Probably a good idea, though. Here we go then. I mean, I am accustomed to wearing Lycra. I don't want to try and hide that from the channel too much, but never never on a downhill bike and never when actually trying to do a time. So yeah, we'll see, but I'm expecting to fly down the hill. I'm basically in full cross country kit. Doing a downhill run. Oh, I'm just going so fast. Oh. I survived, which is always a little bit in jeopardy. So that's the first thing, but God, that was cool. Cause it was, it's so slick out there. It is hard to go fast, but I didn't go slow wearing this. It carried me through all the dead spots where before I was kind of like fighting cause I wasn't on the pedals to try and carry speed. And with the skin suit, I didn't really worry. I just kind of rolled over everything, which was really cool. That definitely felt way quicker, but the numbers, which is what we're here for, and they don't lie. So let's go back to the shed, have a look at everything, and work out exactly how much time we did save. So we're back from Bike Park Wales, and the headline figure is that, as we hoped, the kit does make a difference. So in my baggy kit, it was 4 minutes 24 on the run. On the tighter downhill kit, it was 4.19. And in the, the scary and slippery aerodynamic skin suit, it was 4 minutes 13. So it's really pleasing that actually the results that we kind of hoped would happen actually did come to fruition. And I try to ride, you know, as consistently as possible and just make the clothing make the difference, but it, we have to acknowledge how the, the outfits make you feel does impact on your ride. Like I'm slipping through the air faster in that skin suit, but I felt a lot more exposed and scared. So I think it would be really interesting to, to have pads on underneath a skin suit, learn how to get up to speed in that. And I imagine you would go even faster. So it's testament to actually how much difference it did make that I could ride in this outfit for the first time, feel tense and scared and then still go fast. So where does downhill go from here? As we've seen the way the clothing's already progressed and the tests that we did, there are gains on the table and they make a difference out in the real world. Now, other cycling disciplines have been focusing on pushing that aero envelope for years. So to talk about some of the gains that might be able to come across from road and track cycling and how to implement them, I caught up with the Ineos Grenadiers performance engineer, Dan Bigham. So his experiences in time trialing, breaking the world hour record and optimizing the performance of those Ineos riders in the Tour de France means he's the perfect person to speculate with. Hey Dan, thanks for, thanks for joining me. Um, first question, knowing what we do about how important the kit is, but it has to be practical and appealing to downhill riders as well. What's the, the first place that you would start and what game would you make? There's probably two ways of going about it. So you either want to Reduce the frontal area, which would be like keeping a low head, which is like your your equivalent of a time trial low head position tug. Or you yeah. want to reduce separation by basically getting more pressure recovery behind the back of the helmet, mm -hmm. which is when you have like a longer tail, um, which, okay, time trials sort of moved away from, um, mm -hmm. primarily because the tuck became a thing. But if you can't hold the tuck, then you want to optimize the shapes. So you want to reduce separation, okay. reduce the pressure drag on that surface. So given a lot of the time it's not possible to hold an aero position and reduce that frontal area, could be looking at surface structures, for example. The UCI have done well to ban in the world of road cycling, but if you've got complete mm -hmm. freedom, then surface structures that create turbulence or vortices, then you could really help to keep flow attachment. It's really common in motorsport. There's yeah. a, loads of things you do from like trip tapes through um, like voltage generators. So it just can be like a delta profile sitting on a... Um, on the leading edge and that just creates a lot of turbulence in the boundary layer then keeps the flow attached mm -hmm. so that could be a really interesting easy one so considering those one-piece skin suits are still banned and the uci specifies the need for a helmet peak so we can't use those aero helmets at the moment i would love to implement dan's other suggestion the use of surface structures and baffling 
So these pass that cool test. They're not going to impact on your safety and handling. They're not going to compromise the structural integrity of a bike frame. And my understanding of it is that there is still leeway within the UCI rules to implement this sort of thing. So you have those sort of arrows and bumps and other aero baffling textures on, on your arms, on your legs, wherever there's a sort of body hitting the wind, you can get that on the bike and find a little bit of extra speed. So in this video, I wanted to bring a bit of insight into how important aerodynamics is in downhill and widen the conversation to acknowledge just why the development has maybe stalled a bit in the last 15 years, but it seems like the gains are there on the table, so we need to get in quick before the UCI ban even more. Thanks for watching, everyone. It was really cool. I really loved getting in the wind tunnel and all of the other testing we did and just being able to think about the topic for this video. So if you enjoyed it, do let me know. Give us a like and a thumbs up. And um, there's so much more to explore. Maybe in the future, we'll get one of the other presenters dressed up in spandex and see how fast they can go. We'll see you next time.